All right, so <clears throat> this is the fourth printer I got from that one customer. It's a Ray 3D Pro 2 Plus. It's a massive printer, huge Z axis. Bed isn't very big. It's probably what about 350, 300. Measure it. Right, let's see what this is. So it's about. Uh, so that's pretty close. Around 335 by 335 probably. But a huge Z-axis. So I have no clue what's wrong with this printer. Um, where do you even turn it on? Okay, power's there. Um, it's a dual. That's a really interesting design. Uh, that seems like it'd be a huge room for issues. <laughs> Well, just the fact that it's so long going down. And this is actually kind of one of the reasons why I got into designing extruder systems. I just, there's so many designs that are just, are, I don't know, they're kind of unnecessary, all this extra stuff. All right, so it's not E3D, hot end. Um, feels like it's locked in place, so there it goes. So, obviously it's a dual single heater cooling fan here, large. Fan on the front. Alright, so I have no idea what's wrong with this thing. I just, when, you, when it's like this, you know, it's, um, I just, there's so much room for the ramp that you can't, when you can't grab it. But it looks like a very Bond Tech ish. These, uh, that's what, exactly what a Bond Tech looks like. So maybe it's like a, some kind of dual Bond Tech. Race 3D. Or some custom version of a Vontech. Yeah, there's a motor on each side, an extruder motor on each side. All right, so it's a big printer. Is there any LCDs anywhere? So I'm guessing that's probably the back. All right, okay, it's a big LCD on the front. And a couple USB ports. All right, let's fire this up. Let's see what happens. So now that there is Ethernet here, so let's turn this on. All right, lights. Here's some fans. Guess on the main wire comes up here, goes into this ribbon cable. All right, got a nice big LCD in the front. That's cool. Actually, this was an expensive printer. Yeah, this company does prototyping. Um, yeah, they had four different printers though. Okay, they have like a Flash Forge, this Ray 3D, and two uh, Luzbots. Luz, I can't even pronounce that, Luzbots. Alright, so I have no... I mean, I work with so many different printers that it's like... I just have to just figure it out as I, as I see them. I mean, they all kind of follow the same pattern, but it's, you know, they're all... It's just kind of annoying, you just have to figure out different control panels and stuff. Alright, so usually what I like to do is... I guess in utilities, and what I like to do is probably home. Okay, that makes sense. Home in the center. Sure you want to hum, yes? Okay, I just want to make sure the end stops are, are good. Well, wow, that's cool. It's, I think it's an optical sensor. Okay. Okay, that should be the corner. X, Y, Z, left-hand side. Okay, let's do the Z. Yes. Nice ball screws, by the way. That's, that's nice. It would be nicer if it had linear rods. Or not linear rods, but linear rails. It already has linear rods. But that's pretty nice, have those big thick ball screws. Alright. Okay, so I wonder what the problem is. Could just be a horrible jam. Okay, how's this open? Oh, there it goes. And that's a lot of dust in there, so I'm going to grab my air compressor and blow this out. That's, that's very bond tech -ish. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this might even be bond tech, I'm not sure. You know, my, my concern with this is, this is a long ways away. This is the extruder, and that's the hot end. That's a long path. So that could, I mean, that's a lot of room for heat creep. I mean, if it's not controlled correctly with these fans, um, I mean, that seems like a, that's a lot of room for error. I mean, this actually is one of the nicer control screens I've seen. 
So I wonder if this is actually myelin based, the, the firmware. Um, Alright, so I'm heating up the left nozzle. I'm going to try to fish the, this. If the left nozzle is typically, usually the primary. I'm going to put that, do a test there. And I'm assuming it's probably a clog. Um, so, yeah, they just dropped off four printers. They didn't really say specifically what was wrong with them. So, um, all right, this is the last one I got to figure out. I mean, this is a pretty cool screen. You have left, right filament, or left extruder, right extruder. Um, so, I'm hoping I can just, uh, this will extrude down. It's extruding. Okay. I can see it coming out there. I'm gonna bring down the Z. Alright, so I do see an issue. I'm heating them both up. And um No, I guess we're, we're good. At first, I, I kind of threw them out. So this is actually the... Okay, so that's the extruder cooling fan. It cools off the actual uh, heat fins in there. So, you know, to prevent heat creep. So I'm heating up the second one. Those are the, these are the actual layer... At first, I thought these were the actual extruder cooling fans, and these are actually just the layer part cooling fans. Um, so I'm heating up the second one to make sure it's not clogged either. Um, what's this thing right there? Broken off screw. What is that? Set screw. Well, it's kind of funny. I know this one's actually loose. That one's in there good. And you know, like I said, I found a set screw. It was just sitting there. <laughs> so, I mean, that could be why it's not tight in there. We're not gonna be able to see it, but the right side does have a clear filament jam in there. If you can see that or not. See that clear filament right there? It's stuck in there. So I can't feed any more filament in, and so. I'm going to have to separate these two halves here. Alright, so a couple screws and this whole section come off. That's actually why I took the screws off, so I could pull this without pulling the, trying to pull filament out too much. Um, now i got to pull that gray one out of there. Right, so this one is a fear jam. So it is, I put a little filament to stop the uh, heated cooling fan, raise the temperature up to 260. I'm going to try to soften up the plastic that's in there. I'm going to use this little thing to push it through. Alright, so I hope I can get this on camera. Alright, so hopefully it's softened up by now. Oh, it's still pretty jammed up in there, man. I don't want to get this whole thing apart. Alright, how far is it? It's about two inches down. I think it's stuck in there, man. <sighs> wow, that's pretty bad. Well, I mean, the filament was just breaking apart, like, just quite bad filler, I guess. Yeah, that's a horrible jam. Look at this weird design. Why do they do that? Like, literally, it causes. It doesn't just cause me props, it causes the actual customer problems. They're taking it to me to fix it, you know? What is that thing? It's like a... spring-loaded something. What is the point? <laughs> I can see the gray film, it's stuck in there, you know? It's like, what are they just doing? What are they doing? <sighs> so at least I know where the missing set screw is now. <laughs> goes on that side. It looks like they had tried to get in here to fix it. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, this is beyond me why they even design it like that. Um, it doesn't have to be this complicated. It really doesn't. This is one of the reasons why I started designing extruder systems. Um, if, if you look down below my Thingiverse page, I've designed quite a few of them. Four now. Um, you know, I mean, I fix these problems, so I'm kind of used to dealing with this stuff, but, I mean, the average user, you know, all the extruder systems I've designed have been for easy access. So when you have problems, you can get the thing out in two seconds. 
just because I'm, I know how frustrating this stuff is. Like, you know, can, can you imagine how frustrating this is for the customer? All right, so that little thing in there, I don't know if you can see the little button of gray plastic in there. Well, that's where it's at. I take the whole thing apart to get to it. I mean, so I hope you can see this thing come down. That was all the problem right there. I don't know why they would do that. But I'm gonna get my air compressor, blow that's all the crap out of there and get this thing out of here. But that weird, I mean, I can, I'm assuming that the spring tantrum is to keep this, it's not really a PTFE tube, but it's, it's the same concept, this thing right here. It's to feed the filament through, but in this case, it actually caused a problem. Because when it pulled it back up, it wasn't tight. And I'm assuming this little nut thing here, maybe I adjust the tension right here. I don't think it would be actuated. You never know, it could be actuated. Like with this thing right here, maybe. I don't know if it's, I don't, it could be actuated, who knows. Um, All right, so I think I know what that thing is. Um, I'm guessing it's to raise and lower the heads. So you can actually kind of like dial them in, you know? Um, I just don't know if it's done electronically or if there's like a set screw in there I have to adjust to get them to be even. So like what happens is they're both at the same offset, Z offset. Um, that's a different way of seeing it done. So I don't know if there's a... This is a $5,000 printer, so it's not a cheap printer. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see some of the, like I said, the ball screws, the optical um, end stops. I mean, I can definitely see some of the nicer features why it would be a more expensive printer. All right, um, I gotta button that down. I gotta first heat it up to, well, anytime you actually uh, uh, fix a nozzle, you have to heat it up because the plastic is like glue and it will uh, prevent it. So I'm gonna screw this tight, that way I can get this evened out here. Okay, yeah, I'm guessing see that. But see there's about a millimeter gap between the top and the block? That's what you want because that way you know it's locked in place. So in a previous video I just did on that piece of printer, right? If they're not locked in place, right, I'm not clamped in here. If it's not a tight fit, you're locked on the block. You, you know you're not locking against the heater brake here, right? So if you're not locked in there, plastic can sometimes ooze over the top. And come out of the top of the filament. So if it ever comes out of the top, like it looks like this one did. You see how this right here? See, you see all this film on the top right here? It was actually oozing out of the top. So, um... So I have to take it out, readjust it, make sure it's locked in place. You know, clean that up a little bit. That's cool that it yeah. actually has local storage. So, put the film in a shot glass. Okay. So I might create a calibration cube, come back. Hopefully there's a cure profile for this printer. Some of these actually like custom printers, or there's not, so. Um, yeah, they have their, like a lot of them actually have their own slicing software. Um, yeah, I'm wondering about, I don't see any option for like bed leveling. Um, I wonder if it's going to, there's an auto sensor. I mean, I don't, obviously I don't see a build touch or capacitive sensor, but as you saw in my last video, like with the, with the, uh, not Luzbot, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the Luzbot, they actually have like the, where the probe and hit the corner, the actual like ground out on, the, on like some corner washers. So there's a lot of different ways I've seen bed leveling. Yeah, so I've never messed with one of these printers before, so I really don't know what to expect. So, starting to print. The bed's already thrashed already, so. There it goes. Let's see what happens. Like I said, I don't know how it's going to actually determine the Z axis. Okay, bring in the Y. So, I don't know if it goes back and touches those probes right there. That's maybe what it does and kind of like releases it. Then I can maybe do the offset in the control panel. Um. So maybe it's going to ground out these things. I have no idea what's going to happen. How it does, how it determines the Z, Z offset. Because I don't see like any adjusters on the bottom of the bed. Um, yeah, like I said, it has that servo which can go up and down, which is I guess is kind of cool, but it's way more. I don't know. It doesn't need to be that complicated though. I guess I'm not surprised that they have an unusual way of setting the Z with this twist knob here. Um, there's other videos online how to do it, so we'll do it. 
All right, so there's no live Z adjust. That's horrible. Um, not being able to actually move up and down real time as you're doing like a, like a test skirt. Like normally on other printers, I'd do like 30 skirt layer lines and I can adjust it to see what the offset is. And adjust in real time. With this printer, I can't do that. No go. Um, you have to adjust it from here. What if the bed's not straight? Or, I, I mean, I, had to, I Z'd it more towards the center here, but it's, it's still too high. But it shows that it's fine. I'm using my shim here. Major. That's not good. For a printer in this price range, I mean, that's like standard. Entry level cheap printers have that. Alright, so I noticed. Sorry for the background noise. It's a different day. See how close at the uh, hot end is to the cooling fan here? Well, Whoever put this back together originally put this on backwards. So I looked at some of the factory pictures, and this is reversed around. The left is, left is reversed, the right is fine. So I have to go back and uh, I have to flip it around. So this is supposed to be on the inside. This heater cartridge is supposed to be on the inside. All right, this is a hard one to extract, the heater cartridge and the thermistor. Um, yeah, there's four set screws, but still, like the because it overflowed, it's the, the filament actually acts like a glue. Yeah, I mean, you normally heat this up, so I already heated it up already, but I still couldn't get it out, so I'm going to have to heat it up again. Alright, this has definitely been a headache printer, but I got that thing ready done. I already have a few hours in this thing. Just trying to figure out all the different issues with it. Yeah, this thing is really screwed up. Either the driver's messed up, or the... The one extrude. I don't think I feel like there's a... I can hear it clicking. It could be a bad wire, I'm not sure. Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, there's something definitely, it won't extrude right. So this thing has all kinds of problems. Let's try the right side. Get back and... Ah, man, this thing is... kind of a headache. I'm going to try the right side and see if it extrudes. What I was saying is it could be the motor. Well, it's not the motor because I actually I'm doing the second motor here. So it could be the wiring that goes all the way back to the main board. Or it could be the uh, driver of the main board. But, uh, yeah, something's not working right with the, uh, you know, let me try that I'll show you that again. Go back to utilities. So I'm heating up the second extruder. You have to heat up the extruders before you can... Hear that? To me, it seems like a not. You're probably only energizing one coil. So, I mean, this printer has so many problems. Like even the right side is messed up too. It's like, is this a test, or is this thing actually really that jacked up? I mean, how could so many different things be wrong with it? I mean, was somebody just hitting all the buttons or something? Okay, so one thing I thought was weird too was uh, other and then hardware. And then uh, steps per unit, right? That seems like a lot to me. That's that's a crazy amount of steps. I mean, normally a typical Bontech three to one gear ratio is about four hundred fifteen steps per per millimeter. Um, so that could be it, but that's weird. I didn't put that number in there, so. I don't know where that number would have come from, if that's even, I mean, I've never, because it depends on a lot of different factors, but the gear reduction, the micro-stepping, the type of motor, if it's 1.8 degree, um, you know, how many steps per revolution, which is typically usually about 200, um, or 400, depending on the motor, but, yeah, that's, that's odd. I finally started to get some calibration stuff done. It looks like it's pretty wrapped. I would use their software, the Ideal Maker software. All this noise. Nah, it's already jamming. What's the thing doing? Some stuff we're having filling it. It's still sucking it in. That's 
horrendous. What is up with this thing? I'm trying to finally get that thing to print the way I want it. Doing 30 uh, skirt layer lines. I always usually do that so I can see how the how well the Z off. Well, this one actually doesn't have live adjust. You can't do live Z adjust. Uh, but I usually do the 30 like when I'm dialing a printer. I'll do like 30 outside uh, skirt layer lines so I can dial in the Z. But um, yeah, definitely a pretty annoying printer. Yeah, I mean, if you don't actually have to get the dual Z, I mean, if you don't need to have dual filament, I mean, I definitely wouldn't do it. It actually causes, to me, it creates more problems than it's worth. You know, if you're just, especially if you're just modeling and stuff, I mean, unless you're making something decorative, but, I mean, this is just for prototyping, so. Um, yeah, this creates a lot of headache having the dual, uh, dual extruder. I don't know what's up with this filament, but this drives me crazy. Like, it starts off good. And then, and I got a really good first layer. Here, I'm going to try to film it. This is, this is horrible. I mean, I guess the first layer was good. All right, the calibration cube is done. Looking pretty good. All right. Yeah, this is probably, uh, probably definitely one of the more complicated printers. I mean, it's in a whole different price category, though. It's a $5,000 printer, so. Um... Interesting, you know. Um, I mean, I guess I'd probably rather have a Veron printer. I don't like when the, I like when the when the, the whole Z gantry moves, and not the bed. Um, the well constructed ball screws. Um, I don't know. It's cool, I guess. I don't. I don't think I'd want to spend five thousand dollars on it though. But um, all right, cool. Another printer fixed. Awesome.